Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over our lineup construction for the, I guess, uh, throwdown or whatever it's called today, uh, for the UFC Salt Lake City, where we're going to be using Saberson to try to build a good portfolio of lineups, specifically with the intention of taking down the big $200,000 prize. So, um... This is not going to be about what the best plays are. We went over that, uh, I think it was yesterday or even Thursday. But just to kind of review, um, it's it's a it's a card that does not have a lot of upside in general. You do have two five-round fights, of which one of them is really rating to be three rounds or less in the Pereira fight. So the Pereira play is going to be very similar to, say, the Cesar Almeida play. They'll have the same inside the distance line. And there's really no extra benefit of getting that fourth and fifth round with, with um, Pereira anyway. So those two are equal. Span has a great inside the distance line and, and Harrison is, you know, has a decent inside the distance line plus a bunch of takedown upside. So those four plays um, are all, you know, dominating the proceedings. Um, and, and what that does to, this type of card from a lineup construction perspective, if you could follow this is when you are going through the process of trying to get unique, it's a little, uh, it's a little fishier to leave money on the table. Okay. That's usually a really good technique to use to try to get unique in these big contests. But when the upside is really, you know, top loaded as far as salary goes, um, it's very, very difficult to leave money on the table uh, and have a shot to be optimal. I mean, Harrison, 9,800, uh, Perhea, 9,400, Almeida, 9,400, and 9,200 for, for a span. Those are the four fighters which by far have the most upside on the slate. And so if you're going to leave money on the table and risk not getting to those guys, it's going to be extremely difficult to compete for the optimal because – I would think at least you know two of them, you know, are going to score pretty well. And, and if that's the case, uh, you know, leaving money on the table becomes very it becomes a very difficult road to success. So uh, that's one thing that we're not going to do. The other thing to think about is it's it's a twelve fight card, which is uh, okay as far as being able to get unique. I would say on the lower end of of good. <laughs> I mean, I really prefer thirteen or fourteen fights. But the problem is, is that you have two five round fights, um, which are going to dominate a lot of the ownership and probably for good reason. One of them probably for good reason. You know, the, the well, I shouldn't say that the, the Pereira fight is going to going to be a good fight to target because, again, there's very little upside. Normally, what I would say is, well, you know what? Uh, Pereira is he, 9,400. Even if he gets the first round knockout, it's probably not going to be good enough. But on a card like this, it probably is going to be good enough. Um, and the, the other five round fight is just you know, these two women just are just capable of putting on just a lot of volume and a lot of, a lot of activity and over five rounds, it's just going to add up. And again, on another card with a lot of upside in the other fights, I would say it's a, there's a chance you can fade it on, on a card like this. It's very difficult. So what you're going to have to do if you want to get unique in a contest like this is it's very difficult. You have to, number one, probably not leave money on the table. And number two, probably not fade that five round fight. So, so what you're going to be faced with is this, is this ownership problem of, of how to get different completely using ownership. Okay. Because you're not going to be able to do it, leaving money on the table. Um, and here is where I think we're finally going to have to use uh, geo mean filtering to do that. I think we're just going to have to force in like low owned plays that are not the good plays. You know what I mean? Like I think you have to play the five round fight and you probably have to play at least one of those, you know, uh, Pereira. What's his name? Uh, uh, Span and Almeida. But outside of that, I mean, I think you really have to start getting pretty funky with with everything else. Um, and that's what I think Geomean filtering can do for you on a card like this. As as you get again, if you guys have been following these, I've kind of I don't say abandoned, but there hasn't been a card where I've really needed to access this 
uh, geomine filtering technique. And I think this one is probably the one to do that. So the first thing that we did was we we uploaded the projections and you know and and we just ran five thousand lineups, and I guess it is sort of important to see what we're getting here, but it's more important to know how we're getting it. So we're rating everything by MMA default, which again for those of you who are, are new to this, according to Saber Sim, it is sort of a high upside uh, build. I mean it's it's point seven five times the um the 99th percentile outcome, which is not, which is not bad. Um, it's not as aggressive as this metric used to be. Um, that kind of became the sheets default metric, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is kind of aggressive, but not overly aggressive. And that's why you'll see like, you know, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, you, you, you have 98% Pennington in, on a build like this. And then, you know, a whole bunch of guys, you know, uh, and these guys like McGee, Hubbard, these are all very popular underdogs. I mean, there's going to be nothing particularly unique about this entire build, okay? So I think that on a card like this, you're probably not going to get, you know, make too much headway out of this. Now, if you instead wanted to go to the old school, you know, the 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 MMA sim diversity setting, okay? So again, let, let's, let's remind ourselves what that is. So sim diversity 10... If you look into the eyeball, that's it, it, it does ding the average ownership by minus 0.2, but it doesn't really uh, prioritize the 99th percentile outcome. So this is actually okay, but it's not, you know, it's not end all be all either. And you, but you will see that at least with this type of build, you're getting a little less Pennington, which I don't know whether that's good or bad, right? But you see, it's, a, it's just a little bit different look to, to the exposure here. But again, I still think that on a card like this, this is just not going to be good enough um, to get unique enough to, to, to do what you want to do. Um, let's take a look at this Sheets default setting. And we kind of created this again like a few, you know, a few months ago by kind of by accident. This actually used to be kind of a derivative of an old setting that SaberSim used to use. Um, and and what will, I'll, I'll go back, I'll, discuss what this is in a second. So sheets default, it's again, it's 0.75 times the 99th percentile outcome. But now what you're going to do is actually ding for ownership by 0.5 times sum of adjusted ownership. So this is actually pretty interesting, okay, for a card like this. Because anything that's going to manually reduce ownership, I think on a card like this is going to make a big difference. Um, because as I mentioned earlier, I don't think it's the card where you want to leave money on the table. OK, but it is one where you have to get unique some other way. So I think that, that actually manually adjusting for ownership is, is a good way to do it. So I think that this using the sheets default method uh, is, is going to help. OK, now, the other thing, again, that you probably are going to want to do um, is is and this is going to sound kind of weird, is actually do a minimum salary for this um, just to make sure as I'm scrolling through here for a minute. Like, I don't even know if I want to leave 700 on the table. I mean, if we're already going to adjust for ownership, I think it's even a little bit too aggressive, but I guess it's okay. So let's let's at least do a minimum of 49.3 for this. And the way you do that, that's, that's actually very easy. You'll go, well, not aggregate metrics. You go into here, you'll go, hold on a minute, where is the, not that. Filter, sorry. So we'll go filter, and I hate when this does this. Let's let's delete all the filters for now. Okay. Start new ones. And then we'll do salary, and we're going to go greater than 49,200. And again, this is not something we're used to, okay? But I think considering that the, the rest of our filters is going to be to get low-owned plays, I think that this is the way... To, to accomplish that, okay? So uh, we're using Sheets Default, which again, this is a custom metric. So, I, you know, you, you could operate at your own risk. You can kind of, kind of create one on your own, but that's what you, uh, that's what I think I'm going to accomplish. Now, again, what you could also do is you can, you can blend these by doing say 50 of Sheets Default, 50 of MMA Default or whatever. Um, or 
like I said, you can do something with geo mean filtering where you don't use the sheets default setting, which really hasn't been tested, but you're going to also get low ownership. So maybe what you can do, first of all, if you want to get a little bit more diverse, you'll go maybe min uniques two instead of whatever. And then what you do is you let's say you want to save maybe 75 of these. But for now, let's not save 75. Let's actually just use them all. Let's go. Uh, we're going to save these to all the content. Yeah, we could, we could save these just like that. And just so we have them saved. And then I'll show you how to do the... Um, the thing with the uh, the geo means. So again, we haven't done this in a while, but what you want to do is is use a geo mean calculator to find out what geo mean you want to put in, and then put it in the filter. So how do we figure this out? Well, first thing we do is we look at how many people are in the contest. So in this particular one, that's all we care to care about is twenty eight thousand two thirty five. Now on my site, there's actually a a calculator that you can use on truedfs.com, but it's a very simple formula you can do manually. And, and it's possible at this point, SaberSim might actually already um, already uh, display it. Um, I haven't really looked at it in a while. So let's just around 23,000. Now, if you want to limit to one dupe, you're talking about a geo mean of 18.7. So what you do is... Where are we at? At build five here. So we have. So what we have to do is let's go back to min uniques one, and then we'll go filter. We're going to change that instead of salary greater than the forty nine two hundred. Actually, we can add another one. Geo mean less than let's say if we can get away with this 18.7 i wonder if we can get away with it i mean we can I think it doesn't show what the what the lineups are which is a little bit annoying but it does not have them can you not get there i don't know I, no lineups let me just try something. I just want to make sure it's even working at all. So geo mean less than, let's say it's less than 25. So less than 25, we could do it. So it wasn't able to get to less than 19. Um, It's got to be though. You got to be able to. What if it's less than 21 even? Yeah, so you could do this. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. Um. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like you're able to get that many lineups here doing geo mean filtering, which is, uh, again, a little bit, uh, it should tell you something. <laughs> it's hard to get low, not lineups, but I think that the sheets default one is probably a good, a good, uh, oh, cause you know, what's probably happening here. It doesn't want to do the 49 two and also. Let's try this again. Um, let's do this, and let's let's do let's do, let's see if we can't. Yeah, it's going to be hard to do it by geo mean filtering, but I think the sheet's default setting is is going to be kind of funky for a card like this. Um, because again, like I'll show you once again, the, the, the key metric here, and you could, you can mess around with this yourself. Oh, cause it was rating by sheets default. Hold on. Let's hang on a minute. Let's do so. Let's do something else. I just want to see if, 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 if I, no, that doesn't work either. All right, let's get rid of this. Um, So to remind ourselves what sheets default is. And you could change this, right? 
it's 0.75 times the 99th percentile outcome, but you do minus 0.5 times some of adjust, adjusted ownership. And that really can get things going here. Um, and you could change this, you know, you could go to 0.9 times, you know, or you could do adjusted ownership minus 0.6, you know, uh, whatever you think is appropriate. So, um, those are my ideas for today. And again, just to re re recap, I don't think leaving money on the table is advisable. And number two, uh, I think that you should intentionally try to reduce ownership using some metric, whether it be geo mean filtering, whether it be just doing product or whether it be whatever, because I think that aside from those key, you know, high upside fights, I think the rest are pretty random. So with randomness, you should try to go for low ownership. And I think that's a good way to do it. Okay. I guess that's going to do it for today. Good luck, everybody.